Welcome back to the channel, guys. On uh, today's episode, I wanted to do a review of the Prusa i3 Mark III S. Uh, now, about five months ago, I did a sort of a time lapse build video of that. Um, so I'll put a link in the description above. Uh, you can check that out. But after five months, I wanted to give you guys a bit of a review on this printer. Before we get into that, um, about 98% of you that are watching these videos are not subscribed. So um, if you could do me a favor and right now just go down to the bottom uh, underneath the video and click subscribe to the channel, uh, that would uh, help me out immensely. For a small YouTube channel like myself, that's it's a big deal. Um, it's, uh, it's a huge help. And uh, if you do enjoy the content, uh, please consider subscribing and uh, that would help me out immensely. There aren't a lot of current reviews on this printer. Um, you know, there's a there seems to be a race to the bottom, uh, cost-wise, on some of these 3D printers. And there's a lot of other companies that are coming out with new models all the time. And I find those are getting a lot more press on YouTube um, and other forums and, and channels uh, in terms of reviews, rather than uh, the Prusa, which has remained with you know, very few changes uh, in the last couple of years. So moving on with the with my decision, I guess, on why to buy this printer. There's a lot of other cheaper printers out there, um, some with bigger build volumes, um, other features. But uh, when I looked at all of the, you know, 3D printing nerd, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of different guys out there that their channels specialize on 3D printing. Um, even guys that were testing out filaments as far as their strength and doing a lot of technical analysis from that standpoint. Everybody had a Prusa in the background. Everybody had one that they used as their workhorse. Um, the other thing that led me to Prusa was the fact that Prusa uses these to actually manufacture and print more printers and if they're using their own product you know 24 hours a day seven days a week um, in this configuration not a you know hugely modified one then it's got to be pretty robust uh, also there's quite a few other people out there that are running companies with 3d print farms and these are the machines that they're choosing so with that in mind um, that was one of the major factors. The second major factor was I couldn't find a lot of upgrade kits for this machine. There's a couple of them out there. There's some minor things, nozzles, that sort of thing. Um, but it's not like some of the Chinese knockoffs or the, you know, any of the Ender uh, products where there seems to be like an endless supply of aftermarket upgrades for them. And, you know, that was another reason to pick this printer here. Uh, I wanted to get into the hobby and test out 3D printing for the sake of 3D printing. So this printer has pretty much been flawless for the last five months. I had some initial issues uh, after assembly uh, as far as bed adhesion goes, but that really came down to the fact that uh, I had put the gummy bears on um, the, uh, the one print surface as it shows kind of in the manual um, and I was having fun with the with my kid with that um, but the uh, the gummy bear kind of residue or whatever on it uh, was causing some issues with bed adhesion and after several isopropyl alcohol uh, wipes and scrub downs um, and I was able to get all of that sort of gummy bear residue off and uh, whatever residue might have been on the plate, uh, build plate from uh, when they manufactured it. I've had zero issues with bed adhesion uh, since, other than maybe some design issues where I was trying to print something that didn't have a, uh, you know, good enough base on it. But with design, I have uh, I've kind of moved away from that. So um, really the hobby for me over the last five months has been creating products or uh, repair parts around the house or otherwise and being able to print them 
uh, with great success. So they do have a Prusa i3 Mark III S Plus that they just announced, uh, I believe it was last night, the night before. And uh, again, they made some minor tweaks to it um, to aid in assembly. I think that the, probably the more major upgrade is in the extruder and uh, they've done some reliability changes there as well as um, uh, I believe the ability to, or easier ability to print flexible filaments. Um, but uh, you know, overall the design itself has, has stayed pretty consistent. And I can see why that, you know, it, it's, it produces absolutely amazing prints. Um, I will put up another video that goes through all of the prints that I've made so far and designs that I've come up with and printed uh, for around the house and otherwise, and, uh, and where I find it, uh, it most useful, but it, it's been, you know, just a bomb proof machine, uh, very trouble free, no issues. So if you want a machine so that you can print and that is what you want the hobby to be is more on the design side of the part and, you know, getting a part that's useful and prototyping, um, this is probably the machine for you. It, it is a little bit more expensive. I'd even consider the Prusa Mini if uh, cost is really a thing because I think Prusa is making a very solid machine. If you want your hobby to be the 3D printing machine itself and, you know, tinkering with it and not necessarily just the end part, uh, then yeah, you can save yourself a few bucks and go for some of those other printers. Um, but you know, you're probably going to be looking at upgrading those and modifying those to get them reliable and repeatable and printing good quality. And then, you know, you're, you're creeping up closer to the cost of, of the Prusa machines. So, um, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in that. Also, their online support has been absolutely fantastic. I posted a couple of questions uh, when I was doing the first assembly and uh, first couple of prints. And, you know, people on the forum got back to me very quickly with some, you know, great feedback and were able to resolve my issues uh, very quickly. So that support factor there is also great. So I can see the Prusa Mini, uh, which has also gotten a couple of upgrades. Um, mainly the bed leveling ability here, uh, in the last, uh, last week, I think they've been shipping them out with those. So, uh, you know, I, I haven't tried it myself, but I think that that will be a real workhorse of a machine, uh, going forward. So with 3d printing, the one thing that I have found since I've gotten this machine is really the need, uh, to be able to do 3D CAD work. Now, uh, myself, I've got a mechanical engineering background, and so 3D CAD work uh, is something that I'm familiar with and um, you know, have the ability to do and have the software to do it. Uh, that has opened up this world of 3D printing to almost anything that I can imagine. Um, and that's a huge, you know, um, opens up a lot of doors, let's say, and capabilities for the machine. Uh, if you're th thinking about getting into 3D printing, I would first go and see and, and do some tutorials on, you know, Fusion 360 or whatever other program you can get your hands on for uh, 3D CAD work and learn the CAD side first uh, before going out and buying your 3D printer. Uh, it doesn't take long to get comfortable with the basics of it, but that's going to open up a lot of doors for you when it comes to choosing what to 3D print. There are an, an enormous number of files that are available online, uh, Thingiverse and, and other channels like that, or other web pages like that, that have you know pre-built models from other people that they've shared, and those are great, but I think that the real advantage uh, for 3D printing is to be able to replicate things that you have in your house or improve things that you have in your house. 
make that custom little fitting or, or adapter plate or, or other thing like that. And that's not gonna be something that you find online and just print. That's gonna be something that you sort of custom design. And it can be a very basic part, um, but uh, if you don't have those three CAD skills, you don't have a three CAD software, uh, that's where your limiting factor is going to be. Now that you've got your 3D CAD model of what you wanna build, there is a Prusa slicing software uh, that's free off their uh, website. I'd recommend that you pull that um, and, uh, or download that, install it and try that out. Uh, a lot of people are using the Prusa slicer even if they don't have a Prusa printer. Uh, it's got some great features, uh, paint on supports, which is a newer feature, which is uh, really cool. And, uh, but all of the supports, uh, this one was printed with quite a, quite a few supports. Um, and this is a, uh, um, for the center console of a, a GMC truck, the, uh, the latch that allows you to open it. But, uh, you know, everything with that software is, uh, is really solid. Uh, it does take a little bit of getting used to and some experimenting because you can, you can have a five hour print that with changing a few parameters, you can get to print in two and a half hours. And so, you know, some of those uh, settings um, and then realizing what those settings do to your final part is kind of key. And uh, it, it does take some experimenting to see like, you know, how strong you need the part to be, you know, how many perimeters do you need, how many bottom and top layers you need, what kind of, what percentage infill uh, you really need to use for your parts. Uh, but that's been more of a trial and error basis uh, for myself, um, getting comfortable with, uh, with the materials and with how the 3D printer is printing. So as I said, I will have one more video that I uh, upload here shortly with all of the prints that I've made so far uh, over the last five months that are more on the sort of custom defined parts to give you guys an idea of what can be printed or what I've been able to print and some of the more useful uh, applications that I have found. Uh, if you do have any questions uh, about uh, the Prusa, about 3D printing, about slicing uh, your parts, uh, please leave them in the comment section below and uh, I will uh, try to get back to you. Uh, as I said, I've only been doing this for about five months now, so I am by no means uh, an expert like some of the other guys uh, in the community that have been doing this for, for five, 10 years. Um, but uh, I will try to get back to you uh, with uh, the best knowledge that, that I have to date. So uh, please stay tuned for that. And uh, if you can, uh, can subscribe and this, give this video a like, it would be much appreciated. That'll help me and the channel out uh, tremendously. Until next time, we'll see you later. Thank you.